cutting, ultra-compact material. There may be many different materials that fit under the term ultra-compact, such as centered stone, decton, porcelain, glass, and so on. Park Industries has placed an ultra-compact icon on their toolbars for some of their CNC saws. When we click on this icon, it will bring up the ultra-compact operations window. But this is not where we start. We'll need an ultra-compact blade in our tool library, and then the parts that we draw we'll need to auto toolpath with that blade selected, and we'll draw a rectangle of a slab, and we may offset that rectangle in to represent a tension band on the slab. So let's start by looking at some of the properties of an ultra compact blade. When you go to tool select and add, you have to choose ultra compact as a tool type. You will find that the top part of this page is the same as setting up a saw blade, which was covered in a prior video. And then this bottom section has just to do with compact cut settings. On the ramp in, I have a distance set of 3 inches. I also have a feed rate of 13.5, which is 30% of 45 inches per minute. So after my blade has completely plunged into the material, it will start cutting at 13.5 inches and be up to the full 45 inches per minute in the 3 inches that's specified. And then again, it will slow down to 13.5 inches in the last 3 inches of its cut. We will be able to change these compact setting values when we apply them to our toolpaths. So, for now, I'll save and close. And I'll go to Tool Select to verify that my Ultra Compact Blade is selected before I auto toolpath. Drawing the parts and applying toolpaths isn't much different. You can either open an existing drawing or start a new one from scratch. You'll probably choose to draw a rectangle to represent the border of your slab and you may choose to offset that in the distance that the manufacturer recommends to cut away the tension band. And when I place my parts, I'm going to choose to keep them one inch away from the tension band. Applying the auto toolpath is no different. Verify that you have your ultra compact blade selected and that your material thickness is correct. Then select the objects to be cut and finish. Do not select the tension band to be cut at this time, and you'll more than likely extend the cuts to the border with ultra-compact material so that the plunge will happen away from your part. Select the very outside of your material and not the tension band as your border. This will more than likely allow for the blade to plunge into air after the tension band is removed. At this point, all the toolpaths are normal toolpaths without compact cut information. But we can apply the ultra compact cut settings by going to the icon and opening the window. We'll see in this left side of the window the tool information and we'll see in the right side options on how to apply it. But before we apply ultra compact settings, we need to take into consideration the over-travel of the blade. The easiest way to figure out over-travel is to draw a circle, the blade's diameter, and draw a rectangle representing the material thickness, and then move the blade an eighth inch below the material. You can measure the distance, mine being a little over three and a half inches. This may be important if we decide to extend any cuts. There isn't any over-travel protection when we are applying the compact cut settings. This distance is important to know, especially if we are going to be using relief cuts. Some of the cuts, there is no concern with adding relief cuts to the end because there is plenty of room for the saw blade to travel. 
and then on a couple of the cuts, I'll have to be careful so I don't run the saw blade into another part. I'll offset a line to represent the blade's over-travel. The actual value was about three and a half, but I'm going to offset at least four for safety's sake. Here we can see how far the blade will cut when its center stops at the end of the toolpath. And we have almost three and three quarter inches of room before we might touch the other part. So again, I'll figure on the lower side that we have about three and a half inches if we choose to make a relief cut. I'll turn on the order of operations. You can change the order of the cuts if you'd like. And now that our auto tool paths are applied, we can go and cut the tension band next. This can easily be done with one of the functions of our ultra compact cutting operations. In this window, we can view some of the tool information that we set up earlier. Under options for the tension band cut, I'm going to choose to extend the path at the start. If I choose to use a custom distance, I could set it at 2 inches, and then my cut would start at the very edge of the slab. There are only two commands in the command area. There is cut the tension band and apply compact cuts. We'll cut the tension band first. And we'll have to apply a park and pause checked so that we can remove the pieces before we do our other cuts. Click the play button next to tension band and we'll be guided on the command line to select the geometry representing the tension band. And we'll get a little pop-up window confirming that our park and pause was applied. I'll click OK to close the window. And we can see the direct input display if we have it turned on in our toolbar. We'll also be able to see the cut extended at the beginning of the path. We use a custom distance of 2 inches. And since the tension band is offset 2 inches in, it makes the cut start at the edge of the material. Now I'm going to right click on the screen to finish the tension band removal command. And next, we may choose to apply the compact cut properties to the existing cuts that we have. Before we do, we're going to change some of the tool information that we set along with the blade to fit this application. We'll start by looking at the ramp in. If you remember, we set a distance of 3 inches. However, here, in this case, that the first 2 inches of our ramp in distance is on the tension band, which has already been removed. And then since I chose to place our parts 1 inch in from the edge, means that the 3 inch ramp in distance that I set will not even be applied on the actual part. And we may have found through testing and experience that we get the best results if we ramp in 6 inches on the actual part. And maybe we also found that with this material that we need a greater distance to ramp down. Let's say 10 inches. And we would choose to use the same ramp values on the three cuts on the opposite side as well. So we can go edit the ramp in values on our tool before we apply them to these cuts. We'll go back and we'll select the active compact blade and we'll choose to edit it. So if we wanted a 6 inch ramp in and our part is 3 inches away from the edge of the material, it means the ramp in value would have to be 9 inches. And we decided to set the ramp out at 10 inches. And then we'll save and close to save our edits. Now when we go open up Ultra Compact again, we'll see that those values are now active in our screen before we apply the compact cuts. I'm going to deselect the Extend Cuts options. The blade is already starting at the very edge of the table where the tension band was. 
So while the blade is feeding down, only a small portion will be actually touching the material. Now when I choose to apply my compact cut settings, I will not have all blade cuts selected or checked. I only want to apply these settings to the tool paths that I select. And when we press the play button, it asks us on the command line to select the tool paths to apply the compact cut settings to. And then of course finish. When the compact cut settings are applied to a tool pass, we'll see them change from blue to purple. You may also notice that in the operations panel on the left that the six cuts that we selected are now purple. And you can also see that it ordered first to cut the tension band with the pause and then to start making our ultra compact cuts. When we cut the ends of our backsplash and countertop, we may want to make some adjustments. So here again, we have the 2 inch tension band, the 1 inch border, and then a 3 inch backsplash. So if we want the full 6 inches of ramp in on our part, we'll have to change the ramp in distance. So like before, we'll go to tool select and we'll edit the properties of the blade. I'm going to add 3 inches to the 9 to equal a 12 inch ramp in. And then save and close. This time, when I apply the compact cuts, I'm going to use a relief cut. Sometimes, making a relief cut can prevent corners from breaking out. So first, I'll check the box, use relief cut. And I'll also choose to make the relief cut happen first. And I won't use the extend option at this time either. And I'll choose to apply this information into the four tool paths. We can see the relief cuts defined by the purple arrows going in the opposite direction of the original toolpath. And since we selected set as first operation, the relief cuts happened first, which we can also see in our operation panel by expanding that particular operation. Some of the material manufacturers suggest not to plunge right on a part which we can see is happening in this relief cut. So I'm going to choose to extend this relief cut. I'll set a distance of three and a half inches. The blades over travel. This way the blade will plunge and then feed into the side of the part. I can also choose to extend the cuts past the end as well. Pay attention and be careful which cuts you're extending. There is no automatic protection to keep the blade from running into another part. I'm going to apply compact cut settings into this toolpath as well. But first, I'm going to reverse the direction of the cut so it will plunge outside in the scrap instead of alongside my part. So I'll choose to reverse the cut direction. And now I can apply my compact settings. I won't need a relief cut here because we're not going past the corner. But this time I will use the extend cuts at the start so that my blade plunges more into the scrap and not alongside my part. I'll select to use the blade over travel distance what was calculated for me. If I did choose to apply compact cut settings to my sink, I would have to be careful not to extend the start or the end of the toolpath, or it would overcut my sink. And now that we've covered most of the bits and pieces of Ultra Compact, I'll reprogram this, going about it in a more typical routine. So I'll undo all of the cut paths. There's no easy way to undo ultra compact cuts. So basically, I'll have to start from the beginning with my clean drawing. So I'll click on Auto Toolpath because I have Undo selected. And then I'll click on it again so I can reapply 
the toolpaths. With all of my settings correct, I'll select all of the geometry to be cut. I'm not going to extend cuts to the border this time, but I am going to reverse the cut direction so that it cuts from the outside in. Many times, this is the preference of the material manufacturer, and we'll extend the cuts out to the border when we embed the ultra-compact settings. We can do this because we know how far in the tension band is and how far in the parts are from the edge of the material. So first, let's cut the tension band. We'll choose Ultra Compact. And as we saw before, we can change these values if needed before applying them to our tension band. I won't choose to use a relief cut on my tension band, but I will choose to extend my cuts both at the start and the end. And I'll change the value to 2 inches to extend the cut to the edge of the material on both sides. And I'll apply this command with the park and pause to the rectangle representing the tension band. And we can see the 2 inches of over travel on both the lead in and the lead out. Next I'll apply the ultra compact cut settings to all the cuts with the exception of the front edge with the inside corner and the sink cuts. If I believe this material is more fragile, I'm going to use relief cuts and I'll leave them set as a first operation. I'm also going to extend both the start and the end of the cuts to where the edge of my slab was three inches away from the edge of my part. And this time I'll use the select all cuts function of this command with the accept selection checked as well. And I am prompted at the bottom of the screen to select toolpaths to exempt or exclude. So I'll select all four of my sink cuts because I don't want them to extend into the corner on either the start or end, and I don't want the start of this cut path extended either. And when I finish, I'll be shown all the tool paths that the ultra compact settings were applied to when I click OK. I'm not going to apply any of the settings to the sink cuts, but I am on this front edge. First I'd like to reverse the cut direction so I can plunge away from the part. And I'll tweak the ultra compact settings a little bit before I apply them. I wouldn't want to use a relief cut or it would cut into the top, nor would I want to extend the end of the cut. I'm going to unselect all blade cuts so I can make one single selection, and then finish to apply the settings. I don't feel the need to apply any of the settings to the blade cuts on the sink. And finally, you can reorganize your cuts as needed. I'll just move the operation of the four sink cuts to the top after the tension band. And then we have all the relief cuts, and then you can reorganize the rest for your best part hold down as you normally do. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.